In this video, I'm going to show how you can design a PDF in a hidden page of your Bubble app. You can see here I've created a simple two page PDF and then allow your users to generate this PDF from anywhere else in your Bubble application. So you can see here we're generating that PDF that we've created on that hidden page. And after a few seconds, it downloads in our user's browser. Once we open it up, you can see there that was the PDF that we designed. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to design the PDF that we're going to download. And I'm going to create a very simple two page PDF for the purposes of this video. In order to create a PDF, I'm going to build a new page in my bubble app. So I'm going to add a new page. I'm going to call it industry report. And we won't clone it from anything. Now, it's important to say that the purpose of this page is purely to be able to generate PDFs. No user is actually going to be able to access this page. So in that regard, it's a hidden page in your bubble app. It's not going to be there for people to, to look at. And as I said, I'm going to create a very simple two page PDF. So I'm going to change the container layout to a column. I'm going to go and search for a group element and I'm going to drop that into my bubble canvas. I'm going to call this group group cover page. And I'm going to set the width and the height of this group and I'm going to make these fixed. And the reason I'm making this fixed is I know I want to create a letter size PDF. And I know from this website here, pixelsconverter.com, that the width in pixels of a letter size PDF is 816 and the height is 1054. So that's the size I'm going to use for my groups. So if I go back, I'm going to set this to 816 and I'm going to set the fixed height to 1054. I'm going to give this white background for now. I might change that in a minute. And I'm going to drop a text element into it. I'm going to say this is the state of no code report 2024. We're going to make this quite large. We'll make it a heading two, I think. Uh, we'll center align it and we'll put it in the middle of our cover page as well. Put that there. And that's the first page in our PDF. And then we're going to create another page. So I'm going to copy the group cover page, copy that. We'll paste it in there. I'm going to call this group intro. And I'm going to put some padding around this one just because I don't want the text to be right at the top if I put a container alignment there. This is going to basically be a little paragraph from somebody introducing this report. So on this page itself, I'm going to apply a padding of 48 on the top, 48 on the bottom, and on the left, and on the right. And then I'm going to change that to make it left aligned. I'm going to change the appearance so we have a body large style. And I'm just going to put in some placeholder text here. I always find this website pretty useful for getting placeholder text. Copy that. And we'll paste that a couple of times. And then we'll say best wishes, Alex, founder of Cranford Tech. And let's say as well, we want to add an image in here. So I'll just put a bit of spacing in between all the elements on the page. So the image is in right next to the text. Put that here and I'll put the Cranford Tech logo in. Put a fixed width of 240 and a fixed height of 80 for this. And I'll just upload my image now. And we have our logo. So this is our really simple two page PDF. And let's take a quick preview of this. So we have one page and we have our second page. So I'm now going to create a PDF of this. And to do that, I'm going to use PDF Potion. PDF Potion is a relatively new product that I built and it's used to allow you to create PDFs of any page in your bubble app from any other page. So I'm just gonna sign up for a new account here. And once we create an account, we'll have access to the PDF Potion dashboard. And once we're in the dashboard, we're getting this notification telling us that we need to install the PDF Potion plugin. To install it, you can go to the plugins tab of your bubble editor. I already have it installed. And we're going to need to add access token. So to get the access token, go back to your PDF Potion dashboard. 
you can see here I'm given 50 free PDFs to create each month. There are then plans you can upgrade if you wish to create more. But to get our access token, go to my account, click on generate access token, copy your access token, and put it into the two access token fields here. There is no separate tokens for dev versus live, it's the same one. So we have the PDF Potion plugin installed. We have our access token added, which means we now have access to two new workflows. And if we go back to our index page and we want to create our PDF of that two page document from here, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all go to our database because we need to create a data type that's going to house the PDF. And you can see here that I've created a really simple data type called report. And there's only one custom field with this data type, which is the link custom data type. This is going to be used to store a URL that's going to link to the PDF that we're going to create. But what I'm going to do is every time a user clicks on the create PDF button, I'm going to create a new thing. That new thing is going to be a report. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my settings tab. I'm going to click on API. And I'm going to ensure that this box here, enable a workflow API and backend workflows, is ticked. Because once that's ticked, I'm going to have access to this backend workflows tab. And this is actually where we're going to build out our create PDF action. So we're going to, to click here to add a backend workflow, new API workflow. And I'm going to call this API workflow create PDF. It can be run without authentication. So I'm going to tick that one, but I'm going to leave this one unticked. Then what we're going to do is we are going to Click here to add an action. Because we have the PDF Potion plugin installed, we have access to this create PDF action. Now, there's a ton of fields here. There's so many ways you can customize your PDF, but I'm just going to take you through the bare minimum ones today. Now, the first field that we need to fill out is this website home URL field. And if you look at the documentation, it says that we simply need to put in the dynamic expression website home URL. And we can do that by clicking on insert dynamic data, searching for website home URL. I'm putting that in there and that's all we need to do. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the name of the page in our app that we're creating a PDF of. You might remember we call this page here industry report. So I'm going to type in industry report. Identifier. Now, because we're creating our PDFs on a backend workflow, we need to figure out which report entry in our database to link the PDF to. And that's why we created that report on the front end back on our index page. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to send the ID associated with that report back to my backend workflow. So PDF Potion knows which report to connect to later on. If I go back to my index page, you'll see here that when I'm creating a new report, we're obviously going to create a brand new one in our database. And then when we schedule our API workflow, which is going to be create PDF, what we can do is we can send the unique ID associated with this report to the backend. And the way we're going to do that is just in our backend workflow on create PDF, I'm going to add a new parameter. I'm just going to put in ID. Now, in order to send the ID back, it's really simple. All we need to do is on this workflow, we're going to say the result of step one, it's unique ID. So creating a brand new report in step one, sending its unique ID to our backend workflow. And we're going to schedule that for the current date and time. Back to our backend workflow to fill out our last couple of fields. You'll see here that we can now add ID as the identifier. File name, we can leave whatever we want. And then the last field that we have to fill out is this callback URL. So the way PDF Ocean works is that we let it know what page we want to create a PDF of. It does its thing and then it uploads the output PDF to our bubble database. But we need to kind of help it along that process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another backend workflow and I'm going to call this get PDF. I'm going to tick these two boxes here so they can be run without authentication. And then I'm going to add in two fields here. I'm going to add in the field ID. And I'm going to add in the field link. You must use these exact spellings. You must use these exact names. That is what PDF Potion will be sending back. So this is going to be the API workflow that's going to be used to link it to our report on the front end. And what we can do for our callback URL is we can go back to create PDF. And to fill it out, we're going to go to settings. We're going to copy this workflow API root URL here. We're going to copy all of it. And we're going to paste that into callback URL. Now, we do want to specify exactly which API workflow it is. And to do that, we're going to add on at the very end of this, 
forward slash get PDF, which is the name I've given this API workflow here. Now, things can sometimes be a bit messy when we're talking about development versus live versions of our bubble database. And in order to avoid any confusion, what I typically recommend is just before API here, delete everything, then insert dynamic data, and again, put in the website home URL. That means bubble will know whether to send it to the development database or the live database. We're pretty much there. Uh, the last thing we need to do on this part of it is just set our format to letter. And let's try it out. We're not actually going to be able to download the PDF in our browser with this example, but we're getting close. I think it's useful to see what exactly is involved. So I'm going to click preview, and then we're going to click on our create PDF button. So let's trigger that backend workflow now. Now it will take a few seconds for PDF Potion to go away, know what page to go to, to generate the PDF of that page. But what we should see is after a few seconds, depending on the file size, it can take a bit longer sometimes. If we go to our database and if we look at app data, first of all, under report, we're going to see a brand new report that's just been generated. But if we go to file manager, we should see as we refresh that, we're hopefully going to see a new file being uploaded here. That is the PDF, the PDF portion has generated. And sure enough, you can see there one has just come in. And if we open it up, this is the page of our bubble app that we had built. So that's how you generate the PDF. We do, of course, need to link this to something in our database because at the moment, there is no real way for users to access this PDF. So what I'm going to do is in my backend workflow, under this get PDF action, what I'm going to say is make changes to a thing. And I'm going to do a search for a report. I'm going to look for the very first report. So I put in first item here, but I'm going to put in a constraint. And the constraint is going to be unique ID is equal to ID. So again, this is why we sent the identifier back to our backend workflow. So we know which report to match this with. So let's try that again. If we go back to our page here. If we click on create PDF, once again, we're letting PDF Potion know that it's ready to run and create a PDF. If we go into our bubble database. This time, if we look at app data, we're going to see a new report has been created. And we're going to see in a second now, just when PDF Potion finishes doing its thing, that this link field should be populated with a URL, but it's not because I forgot to do one more thing. And of course, that was added here. Link is equal to link. So nearly forgot that very key part. You might remember link here is this parameter that we input, which again must be specifically spelled as link. You can't use any other word. But yeah, that's how we're going to get the link. And now if we try one more time, we're going to create PDF. Once again, we're creating a new report in our bubble database. You can see that's a new one there. The last one didn't come through because again, I had forgotten to add that link. But if we give this a couple more seconds, I should see a new URL come through here and you can see it has. So I open this up and I look at this URL and I just paste this in here. You can see now we can access that report. So I'm gonna try one more time, just a bit of formatting to show you what's possible. If I go back to industry report, Maybe we'll put a bit of a gradient on the background here this time. So we'll go to gradient and we'll say starts off with that and then goes down to that, but we'll make it a bit transparent. Try one more time. And in fact, what I might want to do is instead of obviously just having it sit there in our database, what we would like is to actually be able to download it. So what I'm going to do is back on my index page, I'm going to go to workflow. And I'm going to say click here to add an event and the event is going to be a custom event and we're going to create a custom event called PDF created we're going to add a new parameter the parameter name is going to be report because that's what we're creating and it's going to be of type report and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to download PDF and the link is going to be equal to reports link and then the file name whatever we want to call it my file and we now need to figure out how to trigger this custom event because at the moment it's just sitting there there's nothing to trigger this custom event but if we go back to where uh when the button is clicked workflow what we can do is under click here to add an action 
we can use this really nice action that Bubble provides called trigger a custom event when data changes. And you'll see here we only have one custom event on the page, so it's picked it automatically. But the thing we want to watch is the report that we create in step one. And we want to trigger this event when the link field is changed. So in our case, the link field is going to go from blank to a URL. And when that happens, we want to trigger this event, which is going to download our PDF. So let's try this one more time. We'll click that. We're going to send our information to our backend workflow. PDF Potion is going to create the PDF. And then in just a second, we'll see it pop up in our browser here. And you can see that we have this nice gradient effect this time. So the last thing I want to show is just a kind of basic UI tip. Uh, obviously, it's not fantastic if we're clicking a button and it takes a few seconds to generate the PDF, but the user isn't quite sure if there's something happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my design tab. I'm going to search for a floating group. And I'm going to let this take up the full page. So it's going to be above the elements. We're going to detach the style. We're going to make this a gradient as well. And we're going to make it a column. Uh, we'll undo the fixed width, we'll undo that. Uh, we will make it a bit transparent just by clicking on this here. So we'll set this to 50, maybe not even 50, 30 might be a good one. Same for the, the ending color. Again, we'll change that to 30. Uh, actually, maybe 60 in this case. Yeah, I think that'll work. And we'll just put something in the middle here saying creating PDF, we're going to change the size of that, put it in the center, and then we're also going to put in a loading spinner. So we're going to go for spinner, which is going to be here, change the color to match the rest of our app. And we're going to make the icon rotate. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say when the button is clicked, we're going to insert an action. We're going to show an element, which is going to be the floating group. And then when the PDF is created, what we're going to do is we're going to hide an element, which is going to be the floating group. And this time we should have a proper kind of loading screen UI when we create the PDF. But of course, my problem is I didn't actually hide it on the page load. So we'll do this. We're going to say not visible on page load. Try one more time. And then we're creating our PDF. We're showing our loading screen so we can't actually access anything behind it. And then in a second, when the PDF has been created by PDF Potion and downloaded in our browser, we're hopefully going to see this loading screen disappear, which we just have, and we get our nice report out of the back of it. So that's how you create PDFs of hidden pages in your bubble app. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below.